Amid here, TV show how. I have with me my friend Elizabeth Cookson. You probably saw her on the intro for TV show how for the launch on New Year's. Elizabeth, good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your X, Y, and Z. Tell us a little bit about you, Elizabeth. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm an executive producer and host of Healing Hearts Radio, and I'm also a fourth generation intuitive medium and soon to be author. We're looking forward to helping you with your venture, and, and uh, hopefully, you're going to anchor one of our TV show how channels. I'm looking forward to that as well. Today, you've, I've sort of thrown the gauntlet you've sort of accepted, which is I'm kind of the skeptic. Uh, when I hear the word medium, well, I was raised Catholic. You told me you were raised Catholic. So um, it, it should be an interesting conversation. I'm not going to put defenses up, but I'm also not going to be uncooperative. So um, Very good. go ahead. <laughs> So as far as what I do, it's, it's pretty interesting. A lot of people ask how I do what I do, right? And yeah. that is I connect with what I call a higher source. The way that it works is I basically ask for permission. I work on boundaries, right? So I don't take information or look for information unless I'm given permission, okay? And so... The first thing is, do I have your permission today to maybe find out a little nugget for you? Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> I feel like I'm stepping off of a plank, basically, but yes. <laughs> oh, no, I will, I will not share anything that um, is not positive because the information that I get yes. is always about how we can improve ourselves or we can drop things that no longer serve us. Fair enough? I, I'm going to add a little bit to our intro. You actually hold a complete radio talk show uh, called? Healing Hearts Radio. Healing Hearts Radio. So I wanted to, to get that. Go ahead. And how many episodes would you say you have? Oh, I've got about a year and a half out there with different authors and motivational speakers and people who are just there to help you improve your life. And, and and hopefully, I don't want to put you on the spot, but hopefully you'll come and help us convert some of that content to video and put it on TV show how. Would you do that? Yeah, we will have that discussion. We'll see what we can do. And actually, I'm moving to a syndicated show here at the uh, end of January, possibly beginning of February. Yes. And it's a WBLQ Transformation Talk Radio. And I will also be the executive producer of Healing Hearts over there as well. Well, see if you could like keep the rights to the video of the audio so that way you can always have them there. But I'll talk to you about that offline. Let's get back to the core conversation. I'm like, oh, this is going to be nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, I promise. Go ahead. Okay, so are you ready to get started? Yes. Okay, so here's how I work. I'm going to ask you for your first and last name three times. That's my permission base that I work off of. And then as we're going through this reading is what I call it, you will see me look over here to my left. The way that I get information is I smell things, I taste them, um, I feel them in my body, I watch videos over here, <laughs> and then that's how I translate it. So it's like watching um, a Pictionary show, and then I need to translate those pictures, those feelings, those tastes and smells and everything, and then spit that back out to you in a very positive message. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, I... I'm only shielded by the fact that we are friends, so take it easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's really good is I actually don't know anything about you, you know, other than uh, some of the groups that we've been in, um, and we have similar interests, but as far as you personally, I know nothing, right? Co correct, and, and Elizabeth and I are what I call growth friends. We're both trying to learn how to hone our expertise. Mine is obviously TV show how, hers is what she is describing. So have at it. You have my permission to get started. All right. So um, the way that I start is I just say a little prayer. And when I'm finished, I'm going to ask you for your first and last name okay. three times. Okay. You ready? Yes. Okay. One moment. Okay. I am ready. Your first and last name three times, please. <laughs> Amid Yusuf. Amid Yusuf. Amid Yusuf. Very good. Okay, so I have a question. Have you had a, um, a recent illness? 
Were you sick just recently, like in the last couple of months? Uh, Had some struggles. No. no. Okay, this is interesting because what they're telling me is that you had a lot of pressures and you had a lot going on and it's because of your success. You're pushing yourself to a limit and your body was a little tense and had a little bit of stress is what I'm feeling in my body. Does that make sense to you? You are very correct. I was up till 4 a.m. consecutively for multiple days and finally... There you go. <laughs> so you're stressing out your body. Very stressed. Okay, so I'm feeling that inside. I'm feeling that like tension. Okay, so what they're expressing to me is that you're very creative, and um, but that took time for you to for that to come about. So they're showing me like in your they're showing you as a younger child, and they're expressing to me that there was a little bit of struggle there. Does that make sense to you? Where it was harder to speak your truth, harder to be able to be that creative spirit that you want to be. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, and I feel like. Um, there's that, there's, and here's where this is kind of a, a challenge. Now, remember, this is not um, about you per se, but it, what it's doing is it's showing how you shift. So just follow with me, okay? Because they're taking me back to your childhood and they're expressing that there was a little bit of confidence issues there, that you felt that you, you had to prove yourself, that you really had to work hard at saying, I'm a me, can you see me? But you couldn't do it. You were like sheltering yourself. You, you couldn't let your light shine. You just had to kind of be a body and not be an expressive person. Does that make sense to you? It does. Okay. And so what they're expressing to me is that you have a lot of positive thoughts, a lot of positive actions that you are to be delivering. Okay. And so during your life, have you had um, issues with your lower back or in, in your hip area? Um, I'm going to say like the abdomen. And the reason I say that is it's you carry other people's stuff. Okay, and so they're showing me because you try to support so many people that when you do that, it's giving you uh, uh, back problems, right? Your support system is your back, and so when it, I'm feeling it curve over, you know, and I'm also feeling it down in my lower spine. Um, I also feel my stomach kind of churn a little bit. That sometimes you get very emotional and you get very upset about things that to you. So passionate, that's what I would get with that. So you have a focus on a purpose, on a mission. And when that doesn't happen in the world, it really upsets you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And uh, when I feel it, it's kind of rising up. So I'm describing the emotions. Is that okay with you? Just I'm, I'm very fine with it. I will tell you my, my skeptical side of the brain. Do you want to hear that conversation or would you rather wait till the end? Um, well, I can go ahead and, and keep giving you what they're giving me. Yeah, and let's, let's finish and then I'll come have. back because it may make more sense in, in continuation. Go ahead. Okay. And so um, what I'm, I'm getting to is uh, a lot about your diet. Do you eat a lot of meat? Uh, like no. more protein related? Uh, I call myself the garbage disposal right now. I'd eat whatever is in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's what I feel, right? I feel that um, having a high protein diet is really good for you because um, you burn energy like crazy, okay? So what I'm feeling is that um, do you work out a lot? Because if you don't, this is what I'm getting over here is you've got to do a lot of working out. You really need to expend your energy because that is what's going to make you more creative because you, you have great ideas and probably a lot come to you maybe when you're sleeping. Yeah. Or later at night yeah. okay well you can stop that if you start working out okay so if you get out and you do a lot more exercise and if you're doing exercise now it's grounding you it's like making you more present yeah. because you have a ton of energy and you're not letting it out in in um, consistently does that make sense makes sense okay so when you start to do that then that creative part of you is going to come in and you won't have to work so hard at it. It's just going to flow. But you have bottled up energy because you're extremely creative. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay. Now let me ask them a question here one second. Are you writing? Uh, right now. Well, I want to write something to follow up. Yes. Why? Okay. Because what they're telling me is that you're very creative and you put your pen down and they want to know why. So they're asking you to continue to move forward and express your thoughts and actions. But what they're also saying to do is in a very positive light. They say you're opinionated 
And so they're asking you to um, watch your words. You're not opinionated. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> and they're asking you to make a difference. And you are you were put here to make a difference because you're very <clears throat> loving and compassionate. But sometimes you're not speaking. See how my throat changed there? Yeah. That was you expressing yourself. So they're saying really express your true heart and your true passion and um, that you don't need to be hard, like be more um, compassionate because you have such a fire in you that people are going to follow you no matter what. It doesn't seem like that's ever been a problem. It seems to be that people love to follow you, but there's a part of you that's going to be able to transform the world, and it's about um, like speaking your truth, and it's also about being um, from a place of like your heart, your heart space is what I'm feeling, that you express it with emotion, with passion. And when you do that, you will have a huge following. So you have a big following now, but it's like bringing it in because now you're speaking your spirit, right? You're really speaking how, what you're intended to do here on this planet. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, they're I'm, also I'm there, I'm there, by the way. I mean, I tell people currently for probably the very first time in my life, I am doing what I was put here to do. I can trace, connect every single dot since I was born and everything, including your reference to my childhood. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a little bumpy from what I can see. That also shows me, um, do you have, uh, from your past, not present, okay, uh, relationship issues? Um, you know what? I, I, if I dig deep, maybe, but I am one of those people that have always turned the rock and found a, a pot, pile of gold under it. And it could have been a pile of, you know, brown gold, but it was always a pile <laughs> of gold. <laughs> exactly. And, and I, because I feel like there's like um, a connection that you're very, I want to say like a little Casanova, right? That you're a little lover bug. Um, and that, sure what that, what that where that was going, but no, I've, I've been pretty much a homebody my whole life. I'm married to a lovely lady whom, mm -hmm. whom I'm absolutely adorably in love with. Uh -huh. Casanova, I don't know. I was always a little frumpy one, so I, I don't know about that. Well, but you give her your heart, though, don't you? Yes, I do. There you go. And it's because I feel like I'm almost feeling it's like this... Um, when I say Casanova, it's like you give yourself to the to to people. Okay, that includes your wife, um, children too. You have children. Yeah. Yes, a couple of children here. Okay, and so um, it's really interesting because you want to give more, I think, than you actually receive. So sometimes you're out of balance because um, you're a big giver. You're a big giver. So it, it looks like you, you have a lot that you want to share, a lot that you want to contribute. But what they're reminding me is for you to stay in balance, you need to be willing to receive from people. So when they're willing to offer you something, even if it's to take your groceries to the car, yeah. you need to accept that as a little gift and receive. Does that make sense? A lot. That makes sense a lot. And and it's, it's kind of a, a life purpose, if you will. But what you're saying, it's okay to get. I appreciate that. To receive, yes. To receive. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, is there a problem with your feet? Do you have problems with your feet sometimes? Mm, no, just shoes not. Well, cold right now because I'm on the floor in the basement. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're showing me your feet and they were like shuffling and I didn't know what that was. And yeah. so sometimes, you you know, it's people who are, are maybe it's your energy, like you're always going. Yeah. And so... To, when you have to release, maybe you're using your feet to go back and forth like that just to expend energy, which is also to show you that you need to get outside and get your feet moving. Yeah. Well, you're, you're saying something very true. When I launched TV Show How, maybe actually about two months ago, I literally stopped exercising. I'm a daily exerciser, and it just doesn't work. Uh, my daily routine doesn't fit it. No excuse. I, I do need to go back to it. So it's kind of an interesting revelation. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so let me ask him here. Hold on one second. Mm, 
Okay, here's a good one. So they're showing me your heart again. And they're saying, once again, they, they keep going back to this. So this must be a very important message and it's not coming clear enough. But it's that you need to lead with your heart. You have so much that you're keeping in that you need to share with others okay uh -huh. and it's extremely important it's almost like you're like this warrior um, put here to to shift the planet okay it's it, and it's like a big I, I purpose feel, I feel that and as a matter of okay. fact this is a year we are gonna make world peace this isn't there you go the, world the, peace the, okay a, and it's it's not an arrogant statement it's a responsibility and it's almost mm -hmm. when I stated it about six months ago uh, you know, a couple of people chuckled. However, the majority of the people are saying, well, about time somebody showed up. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's about time. Yes. <laughs> and, and what that means, too, though, is that you're going to lead with your heart and what you're, you're going to do. Because I've seen, like, from your past over here, it looks like you've been hurt before, okay? And by being hurt, sometimes that brings up that wound inside of us, okay? It makes it a little bit more raw. So when you're doing this, what they're expressing is to be a little bit more um, Teflon-like, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to go lead a huge, you know, revolution, oh, right? Oh, don't to use that change. word. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> okay. Okay. A major, so, a major improvement. <laughs> yes. You're going to change lives and improve the planet. Yes. And it's all going to be through compassion, through peace through um, this awareness that we're living in and it's to bring people to realize we don't have to fight anymore we don't have to argue and I think one of the things is to accept you for who you are and do not look at the outside world for what they're going to say I think you're gonna get a little bit of resistance that doesn't surprise me but what I'm hearing for you is do not let those words enter your heart let them fall on deaf ears because they don't serve you, okay? You've already had a little bit of a hurt which brings back wounds when, when people want to judge or make comments about you. And so the important thing is that you really want to take it, stand up and move forward with it and really make an impact in the world. And uh, it has nothing to do with you as a person. You as the spirit is coming out and you're gonna you're just gonna be a big shape shifter, if you will. Thank you. You're very welcome. Pleasure. That was beautiful. Do we keep going? Sure, Dana. Do you have a question for me that you'd like me to to ask? Now, I'll tell you what. One of the big things that I tell people from the very beginning: I am not a circus clown. Yeah. I am here only to give messages that people are to hear. Okay. So I can't necessarily guess your dog's name and things like that. To me, that's a game. And if my spirit guides are or you know the powers that give me the information um, if they give it to me they do if they don't it's it's not about me it's about getting you a message and so I just wanted to share that with you so if you want me to guess what color of socks which we now know you don't have any socks on <laughs> um, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be guessing that for you <laughs> I, I appreciate first of all Elizabeth I thank you for this and second of all um, you've hit three pretty good spots. The lack of exercise, the, um, the movement, uh, uh, the positive message is extremely appreciated and uh, slightly needed. Uh, you know, I'm out giving positive message to everybody else, so it doesn't hurt to get one every once in a while. <laughs> so I, I appreciate it. Um, God bless you. Uh, I thank you. I, I, I You're very welcome. Yeah. And it's this is really like I say, my whole purpose is not for recognition. It's to deliver a message to the people who really are intended to get the message. Yeah. And it's up to the individuals, right, on what they're going to do with it, how they want to take action, right? Yeah. And that's the key in life, right? We have so many opportunities. Yeah. Now, are we going to take action? That's a whole nother story, right? Yeah. And and my, my purpose is to let people know I have a fork in the road. Do you want to go this way or do you want to go that way? And, you know, I have CEOs that come to me and ask me what to do with their businesses. I have entrepreneurs who come and say, I can't finish my book. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I can't figure out the chapters. 
And with just a, a few simple questions, we sit down and we go through that and determine what best suits that individual to deliver the message that they're here to deliver, right? Yep. So it's... Elizabeth, one of the reasons I, I wanted to do this interview is um, when I heard your story of the struggle, it's quite interesting. Tell us a little bit about the struggle that brought you about doing what you do. Absolutely. Uh, I would say that the first thing is I was a small child when I could see dead people, if you will, if I could hear things, I could feel things since then. And I was shut down. Like I said, I was raised Catholic and that's kind of woo-woo in the church and you don't do those kind of things. And so I slowly started to shut them down. Then as a teenager, they started to come back a little bit, right? And I started to accept them as a gift. When I I've had several children, I have six children, and uh, my last set are twins, and my nine-month-old daughter uh, passed away in a daycare provider's home. And that's really a, a hard experience for anyone, is to lose a child. And that day in particular was very, it was very hard for me. I ran out the door, uh, you know, trying to get to an executive meeting. I had my husband trying to get the kids ready for the day, and I didn't say I love you when I walked out the door. And later that day, I get to my, my meeting. It was canceled. You know, everything is uh, due yesterday kind of thing. And, you know, so that's how my whole day went. Until 3.30 in the afternoon, I saw this black puff of smoke go up the wall, and I realized it was somebody in my family who had passed away. I just didn't know who it was. At 4 o'clock, my husband called to tell me that our daughter was being rushed to the hospital. So needless to say, I was... Just taken back, I realized that the smoke that went up the wall, I, I dismissed. It was my daughter basically letting me know that she had gone. And so I had to compose myself, get myself together in rush hour traffic, run to the hospital and, and go see my daughter, right? And when I got there, it was just that kind of cold, hard fact that she wasn't here anymore. And, you know, I had called the daycare provider on the way, thank God, seriously, for cell phones. Because that saved me as I drove to the hospital. You know, I called the daycare provider. You know, she ensured me they were doing everything they could for my daughter. You know, I called my husband, and then he let me know that our daughter had passed away. And so you can imagine I was beating my hands on the steering wheel, and I was just cursing traffic, just saying, get out of my way. I have somewhere to go, right? And you never know why people are in a hurry or why they're kind of, scattered in things, and things, and this is just a piece to, to consider. I lost my nine-month-old baby, and I just wanted to go hold her in a hospital, and I was stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and just like praying that everybody would get out of my way. And so with that, what ended up happening is within two days of her passing, we were told by detectives that we were not to communicate with the daycare provider. You know, it was a case, you know, basically we didn't know what was going on, and my husband asked me to invite them to the wake and to the service. Now, let me tell you, this is the biggest act of forgiveness. When you do not know what happened and you trust, right? We invited the daycare provider. My daughter came through. Like I said, I'm a medium. I communicate with those from the other side. Even though she had just passed, she asked me to be the loving mother to this daycare provider and her family, to reach my arms out and to love them unconditionally, regardless of what was going through my mind, right? And I did just that. It was really hard. I'm not saying it was easy, right? But on that, it was the fourth or fifth day we had the wake and they came in, the family came in, and you know they were beside themselves. I mean, I can't imagine what it was like for them. And I reached my arms out, and I basically held her and rocked her, I, the, the daycare provider. I held her in my arms. I told her it was okay. I told her that Nick lives in a great place and that she's looking down on us. And she's very proud that we were able to let go and forgive. And the same thing at this service, I did the same thing. I held her. I comforted her. And that's what I feel like my purpose is in life, is to figure out how do I let go and forgive all the people in my life? I am a person who has experienced tremendous amounts of abuse. I have had sexual abuse, physical abuse, and an emotional abuse. 
starting at the early age of four, that's about as far back as I can remember, more abusers, you see that? 10 more abusers than I have on both hands before I was 21. And it is something that I had to go deep within Sexual abuse, very, very difficult to talk about. I felt like I had a sign on my back that said, hey, I'm free. I'm not free, right? I'm free to be a, a free spirit and to do exactly what I'm here to do, and that is to serve, but in, not in that way. And so I've learned to stand on my two feet. I have learned to forgive, and I feel stronger now than I have ever felt in my whole life because I feel confident, secure. I'm, I'm okay with who I am. And I don't need other people um, to accept me or to judge me and say, hey, this is how you should be, should be a big judgment word. And with that, I've learned to forgive. And then I forgave myself, which is the biggest piece. And that is what I share, that is what I teach, that it's what I work with people on, is helping them let go, helping them forgive and be authentic. So that's my, my story in a very small timeline. I know it's a little long, but... Well, That's who I am. I, I, I basically really uh, commend you for being able to reach deep. Uh, we're, mm. we're both Christians, but all, all religions in the world are based mm. on forgiveness and love. And you seem to have tapped into the, uh, the, the giant well of love inside you. And I'm, I commend you for that. I wish the world would listen to you your message is positive. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing. My pleasure. Most people will come. I, I know, I normally ask you what is the largest objection to what you do. And I say skepticism. I'm still going to be a skeptic, but what you did today wasn't a total com converting me to believe what you do, but you got these messages from somewhere. And it appears you were you were very on. Uh, you described the village I grew up in. You described the struggle I grew up with. Now, reasons why someone, and you kind of sort of covered it, but I want you to tell me three reasons why someone should come and see Elizabeth Coxon. Oh, absolutely. I think the most important thing is you want to change. And you want to understand what is your purpose? What are you missing that is preventing you from moving forward? And then ready to take action. It's kind of funny. A lot of people who come to see me are very surprised that I give them homework. <laughs> and if you don't take action, you cannot move. You cannot shift. You cannot change. And so if you're willing to change, if you're looking for your true purpose in life, then I'm the person for you. Interesting. Um and if, if this was a product or a service or whatever, if somebody comes to you and you do your work and they're not happy, uh, mm -hmm. do, you, do you do the work in person only or do you do it over Skype or how does that work? I do it different means. So if they're here locally, we do it in person. Yeah. Um, I've done it at conferences as I travel around, yeah. and we do it over the phone. So I have people all over Australia, New Zealand, London, and so in England. Uh, you know, I have people in Canada. I have people in India. Yeah, so I have people all over the globe. <laughs> and so, so yeah, so, so whoever, do, whoever needs service, I will help you. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to walk over your conversation. You, you can do this remotely, basically. Absolutely. Okay. If and they, I can write it for them. Mm -hmm. And if they, obviously this is a, a service or a product where connection is extremely important. You either get it or you don't. You either appreciate it or you don't. Um, so what is the guarantee if someone, and I'm going to treat it a little bit like a, a service. What is the guarantee if someone comes and, and they're not happy? You know, I really haven't experienced that yet. Uh, usually as we're going through, and you can look at my testimonials on my website, yes. but it is truly, if people are interested in shifting, if they are truly open, yes. there isn't an issue. There isn't even a question there. They do receive, and they are able to take action. So I really haven't had that experience where someone wasn't pleased with my service. Not from an arrogant standpoint, but the information doesn't come from Elizabeth. It comes from a higher power, and I just am the third party to deliver it, if you will. And uh, 
Testimonials. Two people that you can think of without saying their last names that you think this was transformational. You already told us how you basically healed yourself into a most devastating situation. I cannot imagine. I cannot fathom. I pray to God he never puts me into this trial type position where I have to deal with that. Losing a child is probably the most horrific thing. And you learned how to forgive based on th this knowledge that's in your brain. How long ago was that, by the way? That I received the gift, you mean? No, this uh, incident. The loss is, is about three years ago. Okay. And you, 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 you've really done something for them that's very special in that you allow them to go on with their life. You allowed you to go on with your life. And this is what's wrong with the world right now. And I'm not, I'm one of, I rarely will point out what's wrong. I always point out what's right. And you, and your positiveness are what's right with the world. Okay. I don't care what anybody thinks of, of whether they believe or don't believe. But the fact that you were able to transcend a devastating situation and decide that the lives of the, those who were here was more important than the lives of that poor child that departed and you actually let that child's life become a light instead of it become a burial space. I know someone from my village lost their child and he was a beautiful child but his mom and dad essentially died. They literally died. They wear black all the time. They come to church. They don't even sit together anymore and they died. And you, you used a, what, and we all go through something. What is worse than a child? And I'm not trying to bring your emotions out, but what is worse than losing a child? Okay. Losing a piece of land, losing a car, losing a, a court case. You know, we are all litigious as heck. We're always fighting about stuff instead of just slowing down and saying, love one another support one another we're on this journey and let this journey be a space of healing instead of always running and getting i, I know what you should have done according to society hire hire dewey cheatham and how and see if, if they can come and screw up both your lives for what it's worth i am extremely proud of you and i'm extremely proud of how you have turned a negative into an incredible positive and uh, now I'm going to do a little bit of business. I'm going to ask people to click on the link, which is going to take them to places where they can find you. Um, parting words are yours. I would just ask that today, just for one moment, be present, be grateful, and think about the things in your life that you can have gratitude for. And then, if there's one person, even if it is yourself, that you need to forgive, that you need to let go of something holding you back or holding you down, I'm inviting you now to let go, to forgive, find unconditional love, and then you will be able to share your message with other people, and you will help them move forward in life. With the loss of my daughter, my heart was tight, it was closed, and with this forgiving, my heart has spread so wide that my purpose now is to love and to share and to help others. Blessings and love.